So here's a new brake rotor that we had to pick up. Uh, the other one was already been ground too far. Um, one thing you want to make sure that they've already creased it like this. You see the two directions of, uh, of the scarring on it. You want that for your brakes. That way your brakes can adjust into it. Um, the other thing is when you buy a new rotor, if you had them spun, then you got to make sure you sand in these into it. Uh, usually the pads will come with directions for sanding your rotors. Um, but if it's a new rotor, it has a residue on it. It's like an oil to protect it because these things can sit on the shelf for years waiting to go onto a car and they don't want them to rust. So go get yourself some brake parts cleaner or you can get some carburetor cleaner. I got a good deal on this stuff so I bought it. But uh, you can also get carb cleaner and go outside somewhere like this and spray it on. This stuff dries fast so and my whole thing is just to clean this lubricant off of it and uh, let's sit there and then I'll dry it off with a paper towel or something that doesn't leave residue or anything behind it. Uh, this should actually um, dry up pretty quick on its own. So give it another whack after a second like that and that'll start to do it and then we'll flip it and we'll wipe this side then we'll flip it and do the other side. Okay, so I let it sit for a little bit, like a minute or two. Now I'm going to give it another quick spray, like that. And as it, it dries really, really fast, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'm going to take a paper towel now. I just want to wipe around it, get any of that oil that they used on it off. I don't want any of that there. You can see it's coming off on the paper towel. Uh, old dust and dirt stuff like that so there we go for that side now I'll flip it and go to the other side and start working that one spray this one off we'll let that one soak for a minute I'll give it another spray in a second and then I'll spray it a third time and that's when I'll wipe it again Okay, now that I wiped it again, I'm ready to put it on the other side of the car. Okay, so uh, now what I want to do is I'm just going to spray a little bit of cleaner in here. Clean this area out a little bit. This is just brake parts cleaner. Just want to lube it out. Now, I'm going to take our, our new rotor. line this one up to go in like that. Now after that we get to take the rest of our parts and start reassembling them onto this for the caliper. Okay so now we're going to put the caliper bracket back on. And the first thing I want to do is in here in these metal clips actually is where the, pa the pads actually ride. They're going to slide back and forth in here. See how dirty these are? So I want to give a quick spray. I want to get some of that uh, old gunk build up out of there. Like that. Just give it a little cleaning. Oh, better keep it away from the pads. <laughs> Gonna clean all that out in there. This is where our caliper pads are going to slide, the brake pads. I want that to be nice and clean and slick. That way we can grease that spot and they slide. Because what the, the pads actually do is they sit inside here and they slide. Uh, I'll actually, this one goes this way. They slide in here. So they go back and forth. I'm going to get this one to line up. Anyway, that's where they go. So they slide back and forth in and out. You see right now they're st stiff in there. So what I want to do is I want to lube this up and get it nice and ready for uh, those pads to go inside. Flip it on this side. Cleaning in here too. Scrub that out. Get all that in there. Yeah, I got a smoother slide right through. Here. Now you can actually get a little bit of sandpaper, really fine sandpaper in here, and sand this a little bit if you want. But it's mainly these two channels here that they're going to have to slide really nice in. So 
out of that, I got my brake lube, which I got. These are for my ceramic brakes. Tear this off like that. Now I'll take, oh, I'll watch my bolts. So there we go. So we'll take this, put a little dab. We'll dab will do you in there. It's actually a lot. Put that through there. On here too. So what I'm trying to do is just lube these up a little bit so that we don't have any problems with them sliding. There we go. Now, the other thing is, right around these, it's a good idea to put a little lube on them. Just keep these rubber boots kind of soft. If you got some lubricating spray, you can put a little bit on there too. That always helps. So now we'll be uh, we'll be ready to start installing this. Okay, now we're going to take our caliper pad. I'm going to remount it behind the rotor. Now this is a caliper mounting bracket, so remember the rotor is going to sit different. If I can see what I'm doing back here. And we just have to start them with our finger, get a few turns in. And that'll start the caliper mounting bracket into place. Okay, so this is the back part of the caliper, the mounting bracket, as you can see here. Shine a light over here. Here's the bracket. Now on the back side is where the bolts are. And we're tightening them down. Now remember, we're only hand tightening, and I want you to go back and forth. Don't go too tight on one before you've done the other. We'll tighten these down a little bit. All right, move up to the other one, which is up here. I'm going to tighten him down a little bit. And we're just going to keep doing that back and forth until we have it nice and tight. And we're going to hand tighten these. Get the light down here. So we're going to hand tighten these. We don't want to over tighten because if you use an impact on this, you might never get them back off, which is a problem I had on the other side of this car. So we're going to hand pressure only. That's all you need. And we'll go back a couple, for, back and forth a couple times, just to uh, get it nice and tight. But I uh, never need to use an impact. If you do, you're crazy. And that'll do that. Okay, now the part of the pad that's going to be against the piston, some cars you might need to lube both of these, but on this car I only need to do this side, so it's not that big a deal. I'm just going to, going to cover this area here, which is where the uh, pad makes contact with the piston and everything there. Just really need it in a little circle right here, but spread it out a little bit more. And uh, so that's it. And this little piece you see here, is actually the screecher. This is the thing that when your pads get too low starts making that squealing sound. Uh, that's to save you from your brakes going out. It's to force you to go get your brakes done. So. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got the caliper here. We've installed the caliper mounting bracket back on above the rotor. Now we have the caliper. Now the thing we're going to do with the caliper is we're going to take an old pad, one of the ones we took off. We're going to stick the old pad right here in front of the piston. Now this is the piston that goes in and out and presses your brakes down. Now, one thing is I'm noticing is we have a nick in our piston here. That's not very good. So we might need to get a rebuild kit to put back on here to do this after. But anyway, so long story short, here we go. This is how you would do it. You put this on here. Use a big six inch seat kill amp like this. And we put this on top. Now line this up on there, give it a little turn, give it just a little smoke so that you can make this float above. There you go. 
You can actually get a tool that's meant for this, but the pad works just fine, the old pad. The other thing is on the back side is where you want to put the screecher, the pad that has the actual little little tab there to, uh, to make the noise. You want to actually put that on the back side against the piston. So here we're pushing it. Now one thing, before you push this in, you want to make sure that you open your brake reservoir, open the cap so that the pressure doesn't push fluid in. And you want to make sure that you've drained down that reservoir if it isn't already low. Drain it down a little bit so that when it rises, it comes up to the top and it doesn't uh, doesn't actually overflow and dump oil, uh, dump brake fluid everywhere. So then we'll use this, put this back in. Now one thing you can do again, if you want before you do this, is you can take some of this grease. If you go for your brakes, you can rub it around on that rubber boot. Put it in on the rubber boot a little bit in there. Now you could have done that before. I probably should have thought to tell you that. I don't really need it on this rubber boot myself because this one's actually pretty, uh, pretty sound. So press them back in the piston like so, and we'll push this all the way back inside. That'll be that. Okay, now take some of your grease that you have here and put it around the caliper on the piston where the piston makes on this metal part that makes contact with the pad. Definitely rub it around in there. If you can get a little bit on the rubber boot that's in there too, the, the bushing that protects the uh, protects it, get it on that too. Get it nice and greased in here. Try not to get any inside the piston because you don't really need it in there. But the outside right here is real good to have. It. That'll do that. Make sure you have a, a rag around so you can wipe your hands on it. You're going to get all kinds of nastiness on it. Okay, now the other thing you're going to do is over here on this side, if you can see, over back here, we're going to put our pads on. Um, okay, now take the pads that you put the grease on the back of the one that's going to be against the caliper piston and go into the back side here and put these in to those grooves that I had you lube earlier. Now, if I gotta get in here and see so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay now see I've put these pad all the way up against the caliper. I'm gonna take the other one. Now you can rub some lube on here if you want to I don't really believe it needs it. If anything, a couple of spots I'll do it for you just so you can see. If you are going to lube this cal this pad, never put anything on this side. That's the pad. Put it back here. Now you can put a little bit here and here because on this side it's just going to touch here and here. So you're not going to get uh, the same thing you get on the other one. Okay. So it doesn't really need it on this car though. Some do, some don't this one and we push that in. Now as you can see that lubrication we put down in those channels is actually going to help these slide around a bit. So now squeeze them in, make sure you got them in together tight. Then we'll take our caliper and we'll reinstall our caliper over those just like so. Now you have rubber, if you have one like this you're going to have these rubber boots which are where the bolts go in. So remember to try to keep those from getting ripped because those are what keep your your screw from getting keeping it nice and moist in there. They help them ride smooth, there we go. So it'll be that and then we'll I'll show you what to do with the bolts. Alright now we have the bolts that go in to hold the caliper together. Now not up here on the thread part but below this junction right here. I'm going to spread a little bit of this down there like that. I'll put a little on the other side too. As we spin these in, this lubrication will keep this lubricated so it doesn't seize. So we're going to put this back in this side. Make sure you're going through that rubber boot. It's kind of a forehand job, but we'll get it. And there you go. I'm in. So, now I have these boots ready in there. And I put that bolt in. Okay, now 
I'm going to do the same thing to this other bolt. I'll put some lubrication on it. If I can get more out of this thing. Like that. I'm going to go down to the bottom one. Now you're probably not going to see this because i got to get my head in the way. So we'll just imagine you saw me put it in. Okay, so now we put the other bolt down here. We finger tightened, got at least three or four threads going before we started using our wrench. And now we're just going to tighten our bolts down. And again, we're going to go back and forth. So we're going to get, as soon as we start to feel any tension with this bolt, just a little bit of tension, we're going to stop. We're going to switch to the other one. And we're going to put him in tight too. Okay, now see, I've got a little tension there. Give it a little bit, not much. Come back up to the other one. Here we hit a little tension. Give it a little. Now right, go back down to this one again. Give it a good amount of tension. And this one, give it a good amount of tension. Now you can read your owner's manual for the correct torque if you want to use a torque wrench uh, to get the exact torque down on these bolts, but that's pretty good from there. As you can see, the pad sits in here. Take you down here and show you. See the pad right there, and there's the piston up against it. So that's it. And here's the other pad inside here, and that does that. So we'll shake this guy around. You feel it's nice and it slides around on it. That's what you want. The pads are loose like that. That's how you want it. Remember, you watch for these rubber boots right here. They're in between the two. There's a little rubber boot here and there's one down here too. If you have, after you tighten it down, if any of the grease leaked out, just wipe it on that boot like that. And that'll, you know, you can also take a little bit extra of the grease you had left over. And you can, uh, well, if I got any left over in this one, you can squeeze a little on there like that. And just wipe it on that rubber boot. Always protect your rubbers. Always use protection, <laughs> and uh, that'll be a good brake job. Okay, now I want you to put your uh, your lug nuts back on, but don't put them on tight. Once you put the tire in like this, just put it on loosely like that, and take your lug nuts, and just finger, finger them on. Don't put them tight at all. Just make sure you get them in the groove, get a couple of turns on them. That's it. And, uh, and that'll do that. I don't want you to put them on tight. Yeah, they got a lot of room to play here on this one. So that's all we're going to do, okay? And then we're going to come back, and I want you to read your owner's manual. It'll tell you the bolt pattern, how to torque down these bolts. This car I already know very well. It's opposites like this. So, but go and check the bolt tightening specs and recommendation for your car in case you have a Humvee or something that has a very different way the bolts go down. So, uh, That'll be it. I want you to tighten them down, give them a good torque with your hand only. No impact wrenches, people. No impact wrenches. Okay, now the bolt pattern specs for this one. Like I said, I start here. Now I've tightened them down a little bit. We're going to give a little torque right on that one. Then we're going to drop to, the, to this one, the, the lower one down over here. We're going to spin him, give him a little bit of torque. Hand tighten only again. We'll go to this one. I'm going to tighten him down a little bit. We're going to go to this one, and this is the opposites going back and forth. And that's how GM likes to do it. And then we'll start over and we'll tighten again from this one. Now again, we're doing this on this one while the tire is still a little bit off the ground. Be careful that you're not torquing so hard your jack's about to slide out and fall down. But we give it a little bit like that before we, uh, we move on. And now we're ready to jack the car down, and then we'll tighten it over on the pattern again, using a foot on one end, hand on the other, wrenching it on. And then we'll be ready to go test drive this thing and break in these brakes a little bit. Okay, now that we've put the tire back on, we've tightened the lugs back down again in the same pattern that we've been doing it. Um, now, I'm not going to put the cover back on just yet because I want to go take it for a little test run and break these brakes in. Now to do that, we're going to take this car up to 30 miles an hour, and then we're going to go to a stop down to about 15, 10 miles an hour. Then I want to speed it back up to 30 and break it back down again. I want to do that about five times. 
then I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to come back. I'm going to check everything, make sure that everything looks good. I'm, you know, nothing's burning up, nothing's leaking. I check for brake fluid leaks everywhere. Again, make sure before you do that that you close your brake reservoir because you opened it to press back in the piston. Um, and maybe if you have to put in any more brake fluid, do it if there's not enough in there. And uh, that'll be it. And then once we come back and everything seems to be okay, we'll put the caps back on and then we're ready to start driving our car around. Uh, for the first 100 miles, try to keep it under 55 miles an hour if you can um, and brake from there. Uh, and then after about 100 miles, start going faster. And that's just my personal opinion to properly break in pads correctly. Uh, not everybody does it the way I say, but hey, you know, that's life. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll go take it a little spin.